James, and a very warm welcome. It's great to be back in this amazing space where we have recorded this London Choral Symphonia album, aptly named the French album. Um, so um, it'd be great to have a little chat about not only the music that's on the album, but about this amazing instrument with the organ being such a, a prominent part of the, the whole project. And obviously we've recorded many times in the past, often with the organ being pretty front and centre, um, but this really is a special uh, instance now. So tell us a little bit about the organ here and the great organ builder, Kabaye Kol. Uh, we're very fortunate to have recorded here as it's um, one of the few places um, where there really is truly a French style romantic organ. Um, we have many wonderful organs in this country but very much in the English style which for this repertoire that we, we chose to record um, wouldn't quite be um, as uh, suitable as, as this instrument here. Um, it does contain pipework by uh, Cavalier Cole, who I think would be fair to say is one of the greatest organ builders of all time and was, was absolutely crucial in the development of the symphonic, romantic okay. symphonic organ. And so if you gave us two or three words or adjectives to describe what a typical French organ or a Cavalier Cole organ sounds like compared to our native British organs, how would you describe them? Uh, one word that instantly comes to mind is fiery. Okay, yep. Um, rhapsodic okay. is one that also comes to mind, and rich is another. Very nice. So, obviously, some of the repertoire we recorded makes real front and centre use of the organ, and all the composers that are featured on that disc were directly inspired by Kavaya Cole and were either organists themselves or worked in churches or were writing for churches that had Kavaya Cole organs and I suppose two of the the main composers on the disc are Longley and Dupre. Um, the Longley Mass, the Mess Solnel being a real sort of cornerstone of the disc. So um, I mean, I have my views on the piece and what a great piece it is. Tell, tell me, what, what do you make of it as a piece and how the organ features as, as, a, as a prominent part of that alongside the choral writing? It's an extremely dramatic piece. Um, the, uh, a lot of the excitement comes from his uh, incredibly clever use of chromatic harmony. Mm. Um, at the same time, he also writes incredibly clever um, counterpoint as well, mm. still within this uh, unique harmonic world. Um, but also the thing that really does grab people is the, uh, the organ, the two organ parts, the, the, the big organ part um, in um, dialogue with the choir and the smaller organ part and it really helps create a, a, a very engaging sense of drama Definitely. when you're sitting and listening or playing or singing the piece. Definitely. And so on that point, tell us a little bit about this whole organ dialogue and the two organ parts, because that's a uniquely French arrangement, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's, it's rare to find this in the UK, but the traditional uh, layout would be in a French cathedral or big church that you'd have a, a, a huge, uh, big romantic organ at the back on the West Gallery and you'd have a smaller uh, two manual instrument up by where the choir uh, sings and the composers writing for pieces for two organs so uh, Longley and Dupre on this disc but um, other popular works are the, the Vienne Mess mm -hmm. and the Vidor Mass as well um, they write the little organ part to accompany the choir most of the time and then the big organ part um, chimes in every now and then and occasionally for big moments they all, all play together. Yeah and as you say there's such a drama to that dialogue and sometimes it's the, 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 the organ parts are autonomous and sometimes the choir is with both and one and not the other and I think as you say it's one of the things that makes the long lay such a, an arresting piece is the way he uses the organ parts and going back to what you were saying for me one of the great successes of that piece is that it does have that Harm, interesting harmonic language with the counterpoint, but also I think a little bit unlike Messiaen, who is perhaps you know the, the real um, 
intellectual musician's preferred choice <laughs> um, is is actually that Longley really knows how to use rhythm and harmony. And not to say that Messian didn't, of course, but I think that the, the Messonnel is really sort of defined by a strong rhythmic language all the way through, which these fiery organs really help mm. to to sort of... Uh, enhance when, when you get that sort of driving fiery sound coming through the organ and the choral parts. Yeah, it, it, Messian uh, takes a completely different approach to rhythm and, and it's a, a style he developed and, and championed mm. and, and Longley uh, doesn't go down the same avenue and one of the things I uh, have always said about uh, or thought about particularly Vienne and with Longley is that there is this this unrelenting pulse mm. throughout whatever the tempo there is a, there's a sort of uh, a rigidity to the uh, to the tempo, which uh, I think makes the music so much more effective. If you if you play around too much with uh, tempo too often, then uh, a lot of the uh, energy is lost. I agree the... entirely. And one of the composers we just touched on a moment ago, um, who also exploits this two organ dialogue, and who I also think uses a healthy dose of sort of rhythmic energy is Dupre. Mm -hmm. And these four motets, neither of which is particularly long, but but at least two or three of them are, are quite enormous in their scale and conception. And one of the things I've always wondered is why they're perhaps not performed as often as they ought to be, given that it's great music. Do you have any insight as to, from the organ perspective, why, why they're not played so often or performed so often? It, it could be, uh, I, 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 have, I have no answer to this, I, um, I think it's a great shame that they're not mm. uh, uh, played and sung more widely in this country, but I think a lot of it stems from the fact that the two organ parts are uh, in, in a couple of them, so the Tantanogo and the Laudate in particular, the two organ parts are very independent mm. from each other and it's quite difficult to as, as a single player, um, make sense of both organ parts into one. And this was, this in one of the Dupre motets, was one of the few instances where we had to do some multi-tracking here. Definitely, um, yeah. Because it just wasn't quite uh, easy enough to, to do it all as one, one and organist. And it, it's one of the instances where recording in this sort of context is very helpful because we don't have to leave anything out and we can create all the right balances and soundscapes to to understand what this two organ balance is like and how it works with the music but obviously we have one instrument at play here um there's a, a solo track for you on the disc which is fet by longley which um again is is a really arresting piece that that's full of energy tell us a little bit about that piece and why you like it it's uh, extremely exciting mm. to both to play and to listen to um, what you were saying just now about uh, rhythm really comes uh, is front and center in this piece um, there's an extremely um, exciting part for the uh, for the right hand solo line all the way throughout which on this organ I used the shimad trumpet the, the horizontal one sticking out the front there um, which is a, is a unique sound and um, I think it's Im impossible to hear and not be uh, gripped by it. Um, and, and that's in dialogue with the full tutti, uh, extremely punchy um, tutti sections uh, as well and a, and a thrilling climax towards the end. So I think it's, um, it's a piece I fell in love with the first time I heard it and yeah. um, so to record here was a And, a and as you say, totally comes to life on this sort of organ, doesn't exactly. it? Yeah. Um, so besides those, those substantial pieces, the long lay pieces we referred to and those Dupre motets, the disc is punctuated by smaller and shorter pieces along the way. Um, I'm thinking of the piece by Guno, much smaller and more contained sounds and scales, but exploits some of the gentler and softer sounds on the organ throughout that. And there are a, a couple of new arrangements, uh, both by Owen Park that are on the disc, and um, the one I'm interested to hear your thoughts on is the Pavan of Fore, which is obviously a very well-known piece, It'd be the melodies from it would be familiar to a lot of people. Um, and because we, we have reduced the scale of the orchestra from the full large orchestra that, that Fore uh, did write for. Um, lots of those sounds have been moved to the organ, so we hear some of those solo sounds and those wider sounds, and tell us a little bit about, about what the Pavan does to, to highlight the organ. 
Yeah, I think Owen did a, a really wonderful job in um, in, in uh, transcribing this for arranging it for, for uh, the forces that we've used here. Um, what he specified solo-wise was actually uh, gave me a, a little bit of freedom um, to choose stops, choose sounds that would that suited the the, the soundscape mm. we were creating. Um, and so on this, you will hear uh, trumpet very soft trumpet solos coming out, big flute solos. Mm. Um, there's one for the oboe and for the cremor and the clarinet as well. So I, I tried to, to find as many um, solo colours as I could yeah. uh, to, to contrast with the string sound from downstairs. So in, in that particular piece, the organ is very much in the middle of the orchestral texture, providing complemental sounds as well as these mm. specific solo sounds that uh, you, you refer to. And the last track on the disc is the, that, that enormous but s small setting of uh, Psalm 150 by mm. César Franck, which, although only four or five minutes long, is this great sort of triumphant piece. And the organ's used in a slightly different way in that, isn't it? In that it's, it doesn't serve so much of a solo function, but it provides sustained sounds almost like the literal foundation underneath what the yeah. strings and the percussion and the choir are, are singing and playing throughout. Yes, and I think um, I, I, I'm, I'm really glad we featured Franck on this disc because I think he, he was a contemporary of Cavaille Coles and uh, through his organ music was, was responsible for a revolution in organ composition in France at the same time as Cavaille Coles was revolutionising the organ itself. And um, what I get a sense of in this in this piece is is with the organ and the orchestra together, and the way he uses them, he, he uh, is hearing the organ mm. of, of Cavaille Cole, but is is translating it into an actual orchestral medium. And um, I think it's fair to say Franck and and a lot of other organists at the time saw the Cavaille Cole organ as being the orchestra solely in organ organ form. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Are there any other standout tracks for you or any other pieces that you thought particularly were brought to life by the organ here? Um, I, I, think, I think all of it, I think fair to say, we, yeah. uh, <laughs> has, been, has been really brought to life by this instrument. Um, for me, um, the, the, the mass really is the, 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 it was the most special thing um, mm. as a piece, um, and I know it's the same for you as well, the piece we've loved for a long, long time. Um, but we also managed to record a, a few solo songs by Longley that have previously been unpublished. Mm. Um, and they were, um, Miriam the soprano who sang them so beautifully was sent them directly by Longley's widow. Um, and they were in this, in this beautiful acoustic and with some of the, 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 the softer colors of the organ, I thought they, they really provide a, a little oasis Hmm. of calm on an otherwise fairly um, uh, loud, robust, raucous, raucous disc. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things I loved about those songs, the four short songs, were that, in a, again, in a very short space of time, I mean, n no one of them run runs to about three or four minutes, really. They're, they're all quite short, but they create an amazing sense of sort of space and tranquility around them. Slow-moving harmonies, these very expressive, melodic, almost like plain song vocal lines over the top. And it's not a very common format, is it, having a solo voice and organ? I mean, one thinks of choirs and organs mm -hmm. quite a lot, but the solo voice and organ, as you say, with this sort of instrument in this sort of space, is a really, it's a very sort of touching human sort of sound world. Yeah, there's a, there's an intimacy to it, even yeah. though we, we, was, we were still recording in, in the same quite yeah. large space that yeah. we'd been recording all the, the big choral stuff in. Um, it, it, as you say, the, you mentioned plain song. I think it speaks to uh, you know a, a single cantor, mm. either singing mm. unaccompanied or or with a little bit of organ accompaniment. But to have a, an actual bit of song um, in that uh, for, for that force is is. Um, is unique and, and very special, as you say. Great. Well, we're going to have a little bit of a demonstration from the organ at some point and just hear what an extraordinary instrument it is. But otherwise, thank you for joining us, James. It's been Pleasure. great and we're looking forward to hearing the disc when yeah, it's done. Likewise. Thank, thank you. you.